we've replaced your regular Tara with a fluffy, fluffy hippo. We hope this will be to your liking. Um, no. No, no, but I have I have a pink bowl. That's that's not no, I I really fuzzy. Want to pet me? <laughs> Go ahead. Scratch behind my ear. Go ahead. Do it. Scratch behind my ear. Please. I can't no reach the, the internet. It's the internet. No scratch behind my ear. You're never going to see your sidekick again. How do I? Do it. How do I? It, it, nah. Oh. Nah, nah. Oh. Oh. I need to go lay down. Dude. Hi. You know what? What's the most just astonishing part of all that? What's that? We're the same age. Yeah, you have like a TARDIS and a robot from a video game stuffed animal and let's, all sorts of other juvenile toys. That's different. That's boy stuff. Oh, it's boy stuff. How are you doing, Tara? Okay. I like this shirt. It's a nice shirt. My, my flannel? Yeah, yeah I, went, cool. I went grunge today. We're all 90s and shit. <laughs> and shit, of course. So, uh, yeah, we're, we're going to have an interesting week this week. I, I, I don't think there's a single headline we have that maybe one that's kind of easy, maybe makes sense. But everything else is is this is Bluey Who Week. Hmm. Because was it last week Bluey Who Week? You would think, but no, no. This week, I think we've gone to plaid. Oh, we have it. He he, plaid. But we have it recorded. You saying last week was Bluey Who Week? Did I show you that I have a merit at all? Oh, that's neat. If Was I could do a Scottish Rogue, I would. No, my, my, my boyfriend bought it for me Aww. when I was sick to make me feel better. I bought one for my niece and she said, now I have an Aunt Tara doll. <laughs> Stand up, Merida. Stand up. There we Your go. Your niece is going to be getting a nice gift certificate for Christmas, I think. All right, let's get the intro going here. Each week, Catherine goes out the worldwide interwebs, finds all sorts of horrible stuff, brings it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And this first one, I kind of respect the guy for his improvisational skills. However, uh, uh, that's about as far as it goes. Um... I know you're in the middle of a crime. I know shit needs to get done, but really, this was the best you could come up with. <laughs> Alleged bucket head wearing burglar caught by police. And the first thing that comes into my mind is a Mr. Bucket. Pop your balls in my mouth, the Mr. Bucket. Um, when Richard Bordeaux arrived... Am I supposed to know what that means? It's something from the 80s. It's awful. It's a oh. toy. It was actually a toy that would go around and it would put balls in its mouth. And there was a song. I'm Mr. Bucket. You pop your balls in my mouth. This is an actual toy? This not like a skit on SNL nope, or something? Real fucking toy. I'm not even kidding you. Hmm. <laughs> No, it spit. About oh, I'm sorry. It, it spit balls out of its mouth. Apparently. Oh well, that's okay then. When Richard Bordeaux arrived at his former employee Kenny Seafood, he brought tools to break in and dressed in camouflage and gloves to leave no trace. Um, he brought everything for the alleged bur burglary except for a mask. <laughs> when he realized his mistake, Bordeaux grabbed a bucket from the seafood market and threw it over his face. The bucket on his head, Bordeaux managed to steal $350 from his former employee, 
The bucket disguise failed, however, when surveillance video allegedly captured a glimpse of Bordeaux's face and he was identified by authorities. So not only have you got been caught on video with a seafood bucket on your head, which, by the way, could not have smelled good in there. And is not going to get you a job in Guns N' Roses because Buckethead, where's a chicken bucket? Ah, uh, going back a few years, yes. But not, I, I, I can only imagine what a seafood, the inside of a seafood bucket smells like. Must smell like an alligator's asshole or something. Probably you know? like seafood, which is a horrible smell. I don't eat things that swim. Yeah, you gotta, I eat, yeah, I only eat land animals. Yeah, you don't like the, the fish things because they partially you because out. of that smell. Yeah, partially because I grew up on Long Island and we used to have like medical waste in the water and I don't trust things that come from there. Yeah. So it, so not only that, not only did you do do this, you only got three hundred and fifty dollars out of the deal and they caught you anyway. Yeah. On every level, you done fucked up. How do you have the whole ensemble and forget a mask? Got the gloves, got the camo gear, got the tools to break in. Not the mask. Like, that's kind of a fundamental. That's like burglary 101. Yeah, you and even at that point, you go through your shit. I forgot my mask. I'll this stop. isn't even how to be a better criminal. This is like how to be not functionally retarded. Like, if you're going to rob something and there's cameras there, wear a mask. Come back later with the mask. Don't just go, oh, well, bucket. Oh, oh, yeah, the channel bucket list. Wear a bucket on my head and rob a bank. That's not how that works. That's not, not how that works. <laughs> the bucket has no holes. Yeah, someone else put a uh, heartless hunter points, which out. is probably how they got a glimpse of his face because he had to see where he was going. So all just everything else he had perfect. But no, why? Why would you? You planned it to a T, except for the face. The next story, we are straight down the rabbit hole. I think this is one of the most epic headlines we will ever have on this show. We have many, we've had many, but this is right up there in the annals of, of our, of epicness. Um, the church has gotten all the Catholic church has gotten a lot of flack. This is in my backyard. If it's yeah, the one I'm thinking of, that is. like in my town, partially, I remember this guy. Catholic Church has gotten a lot of flack in the last. I went few to years. masses said by this guy. Some of it was unwarranted, but in this case, yeah. Cross-dressing priest accused of dealing meth and having sex in rectory. That yeah. is amazing. And they say Catholics don't know how to party. Bridgeport, Connecticut, a Catholic priest busted for allegedly dealing crystal meth was suspended after church officials discovered he was a crossdresser who was having sex in the rectory at Bridgepoint St. Augustine <coughs> Cathedral. And, and now, you, know, you can't say sex in the rectory. To when, be fair, he was no longer a man of the cloth when he was arrested for dealing meth. He had left the priesthood because of the... Cross-dressing and sex. Drag in sex in the rectory. And he was now the owner of a uh, adult toy and video store and head shop. So he goes straight from the priesthood. Yeah. To a porn store, head shop, with meth, and... Yeah. All right. There's a great quote in this story. Let me get to it. Um, uh, it was just it was insane. This this quote. I've got to find it because it was just amazing. Oh, yeah. Well, he was dubbed Monsignor Meth. Is that true? Yes. Monsignor Meth. He was a Monsignor. Monsignor Meth. 
Here it is. This- and he actually was mentored by then Archbishop then Bishop Egan, who was on the board of trustees of the college that I went to, who you might now know as Cardinal Egan, or, well, not anymore. Now it's Dolan of New York City, but he was Archbishop of New York City. (laughs) Yeah. Here's the quote, and it's magical. Apparently my audio is fucked. Yeah, Skype is being Skype. It'll catch up soon, hopefully. (laughs) Skype is being Skype. Um... Skype being Skype, yo. Haters gonna hate. Yeah. Here, here is the get, get out of the way, me. I'm in your way. Get out of your way. Get out of the way. You're getting the. There. I got out of the way. Never mind. This is the magical quote. Rectory personnel became concerned and notified diocese officials when Wallen, sometimes dressed as a woman, would entertain odd looking men, some who were also dressed in women's clothing and engaging in sex acts. Rectory personnel became concerned. Understatement? Well, I mean, they were odd looking men. (laughs) If they were good looking men, everything would have been cool. (laughs) They were odd looking men. Dressed as women. Yeah. Oh, there's there's some of them had like crooked teeth, I bet. Um, yeah, we'd like to express our concerns because uh, there's a guy dressed as Marilyn Monroe blowing priests in the back. Uh, we're concerned about this. Is, is uh, they were concerned because they didn't they didn't want him having they didn't want him like slumming it. I mean, this was a good looking guy. Look at him; he's a pretty good looking guy. They didn't they didn't want him settling for like lesser ass. I'm going to hell. You are. Because you were raised Catholic, so you know better. I've been through all, well, not all seven sacraments, because one of them is last rites, and I'm not dead. So I've been through six of the seven sacraments, actually. You know better. I do. I do. But you would like, you know, I think this guy's ahead of me in the line for hell. Like, I think if it comes down to me or him... They're going to be like, well, you made some really inappropriate jokes. You sold drugs and had gay sex while a man of the cloth and oh yeah i haven't been ordained either so i've been through five of the seven sacraments i actually think i actually think god doesn't take holy orders i'm not a nun either (laughs) i actually think god doesn't mind so much about the gay sex so much as as the methamphetamine i don't think i don't i don't think god is as concerned as what as we like to think about what we do with our naughty bits i don't really think God gives a crap what we do with our nooks and crannies as long as we don't like harm people. I think that's a bigger concern for him. Yeah, like like methamphetamines. Shooting people, people, genocide, you know, tyrannical stuff. I think he's a lot more concerned with that than he is like where you're putting your dipstick. I do have to point out this guy uh, was 61 years old. So, and he he was running an adult store and selling meth. He's spry. Is that the right word? Yeah. Spry for his age. Viral. Viral. Yes. Or, you know, he had a Viagra prescription. <laughs> because, my God, who says life, life, I guess life be- really does begin at 50, you know? <clears throat> and then your prison and sentence you begins get, at 60. And once you get excommunicated. <laughs> Oh boy! All right, this next headline is going to piss you off because you're 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 big on the grammar. And this, like- yeah, th- this headline is badly written, and it's the Associated Press, so shame on them. So they, they should know better. But it is yet another incidence of random naked cooking. I hate that phrase. Burglar who cooked pie in underwear avoids jail. Now, what's wrong with that phrasing? He must have been really, really running a bad fever. I know! I mean, that flu this year is a bitch! While in underwear, you missed a word. While. 
Oh, and someone else in the cheesy mic points out the pie wore underwear. That's another one. Yeah. The pie. What was the pie doing in his underwear? Well, you know, we have bananas in pajamas. Jason Hall nails it. He was wearing hot pants. What would be like bananas in pajamas? Is there a euphemism for underwear that rhymes with pie? I don't think pastries and panties are coming down the stairs. Pastries and panties are coming down in pairs. Damn, I'm good. Uh, Salisbury, Maryland, a man who broke into a Salisbury home, stripped down to his underwear and cooked a chicken pot pie has received a suspended sentence. 23 year old Russell Neff pled guilty to burglary in the August incident. The Daily Times of Salisbury reports that Neff was admitted to a drug treatment court program last week. Police say they found Neff sitting in a living room chair using the TV remote control after the burglary. Why? OK, let's just say for the sake of argument, he really, 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 really needed that pot pie. It's better than I thought, because I was picturing a dude full on baking a pie. Mm, yeah. Like I was picturing him like rolling out dough and baking a pie. So just like throwing a Stouffer's in the microwave is a different thing. But getting your Stouffer's done. You leave. Because that's already you're wasting time sitting around. You don't just like, well, time to make myself at home. Yeah, in like my you undies. don't. You don't you don't tuck in for a night of real housewives. I mean, normally you I, take your pastries and panties and you go home. <laughs> I'm so proud of that. You have no idea. I don't know how other people react to coming into, into your home and finding a stranger in underwear. My response would normally be to grab a blunt object and begin beating them until blood comes out. I would probably scream the shriek of the mythical Banshee. And then start beating them with the blood. Object. To be fair, though, if someone broke into my place, they'd be pretty frightened because it, there's a lot of hippos in here. And they would probably assume that somebody with some except that and except for the hippos, it kind of looks like a 19 year old bachelor lives here because I'm a little messy. So they would assume that someone very mentally ill lives here and they'd probably be right. Let's be fair. So they probably wouldn't stay very long no. in my place. Also, I don't have cable, so, you know. Speaking of underwear, we have two underwear stories tonight. <laughs> Pastries and panties are coming down the stick. We've had often had stories where people do something, get sentenced to jail, and then in the midst of being of the jail thing, do something to make it worse. Mm -hmm. I've never understood why they do this. This guy, I don't know. I, I don't know what pos motherfucker. Virginia Shore man gets jail time after stealing underwear on the way to jail. How is that even possible? A man who stole two pairs of underwear after being told he would need clean skivvies to serve weekends in jail may need even oh. more drawers. He's been sentenced to even more time in jail. Alan Rogers, 33, of Painter, was sentenced to five years with two years, six months suspended for a third offense shoplifting. Um, he'd already paid the 1785 in restitution. Defense attorney told the court late last year that a person uh, checking in for weekends in the county jail is required to bring two sets of underwear. And that is exactly what he took. Rogers well, was that's what they get for arresting him on laundry day. Rogers was observed at an Exmoor Dollar General store uh, by the store clerk and seen on surveillance video placing two packages of underwear into his jacket and leaving the store without paying for him. When he was stopped, <coughs> Rogers said he took the item so he would meet requirements when he began serving weekend jail time. It's very important when you arrest a perp, if you're going to require them to have clean underwear, to ask them if it's laundry day. And if it's laundry day, you send you monitor them, put the ankle bracelet on them if you have to, and you send them back home to clean their undies. That's just common sense, man. Also, two pairs of underwear cost 20 bucks at the Dollar General. Yeah, that's 
that like at Abercrombie, maybe. I know. Was he buying like a Dollar s- General? What, was he buying like the silk underwear? Do they even sell that at the Dollar General? I don't know. I don't buy my underwear at Dollar General. Who? Oh, no one does. This guy's. Well, this guy steals his underwear from the Dollar General. It's probably what? like expired edible underwear. Twenty dollars for two packs of underwear. And how is that? Because it's the Dollar General. Isn't everything supposed to be a dollar? Or no, it's not a dollar store. It's just they just call themselves Dollar General. You know, that implies that it's a dollar store. It's not, though. They existed before but dollar stores. Mean things. I know they do, but they existed before dollar stores were even a thing. Well, that's dumb. Well, no, it's 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 people saying two packs. I'm sorry. He took two pairs. That, that's what two sets of underwear. Yeah, two pairs. That's that's what he took. I, th- I love how we're more preoccupied with the cost of the underwear. The fact that this guy was stealing on his way to jail for stealing. I'm I, it, there's a certain logic to it, I guess. He didn't want to get in trouble for not meeting the requirements. He was trying to do what he was asked to do. Just, you know. I mean, there is a certain Picasso-esque logic to it. Next time, go to Walmart. You can get like 20 pairs of underwear for a buck. They don't care. They may not be the greatest underwear. Yeah, they'll be made of paper. Right. But (laughs) you'll still have underwear. Okay, this is this is probably our most normal story tonight, and that's saying something. This is another one of those. A lot of these fall up your alley sometimes, Terry. You gotta get your show started soon because this they're just coming up with material and material and material. This guy. I know, I'm kind of hoping that you save some of these links for some reason or that my Skype records have them. When you are planning a robbery, there are many things you have to get right. You have to get your escape route. You have to get uh, your means of uh, absconding. You have to have your, you have to get your matching Smurf costumes. Oh, that too. But most of all, I think Probably most important. Don't get drunk first. Woodford County man tried to hold up a local pizza place Thursday, but failed because police said he was too drunk. Wearing a ski mask and sunglasses, police say 25 year old Ryan Hopkins stumbled into the Little Caesars on the bypass in Versailles and with the intent to steal. An employee told uh, news that the man walked in before the restaurant had opened, smelling of alcohol, and appeared extremely intoxicated. The employee said Hopkins said, this is a holdup while badly slurring his speech. The employee asked you to leave the premises, and Hopkins walked out. It was later picked up by police charged with public intoxication. He will not be charged with attempted robbery because he did not actually have a weapon. This is a holdup. You should go. Okay. <laughs> not only that, he he went there before they opened. That's not when you get the money. The money is before they close. The money's gone at that point. You go. You, you, okay, uh, Kank's cow. Yes, go home, robber. You are drunk. <laughs> it was bound to happen, and he did. And yeah, people are saying uh, he's still drunk. Let's look at that. Let's get him on the big screen. Is that even a crime, though, if he wasn't armed and just left when they said no? Like, nope, just public intoxication. Oh, okay. So, you know, that that's kind of being drunk kind of saved him from making it worse. So really being drunk was an awesome idea in this case. (laughs) (laughs) He drank his way to a lesser charge. (laughs) Good on you. I just it's like. Go. Uh, just hold up. Get your money. Okay. Thanks Go. for noticing me. <laughs> but just. How long do you think he planned this? Was he just like getting his courage up? Maybe. I'm going to I'm going to totally hold this place up. Just need a couple more shots and I'll be ready to do this. And then. 
two hours later. I don't think it's a plan thing because if it was a plan thing, he might have had like a weapon. I think this was an idea that happened after drunk. Hey, you know what? Like there's um, there's there's BD ideas, there's before drunk ideas, and then there's AD ideas. And this was an AD idea. This was after drunk. <laughs> I'm I'm out of beer. I need money. I'm I'm a, I'm 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 a robber of the Caesars. And you know, at money. least he walked there because we drunk. all know how dangerous it is to drive near a pizza place, and that plus drunk driving. Oh my God, there would be a hole in the universe. Are we? Ha- I guess we're kind of happy about this guy. Yeah, this guy kind of is awesome <laughs> in his way. For this show, you he's shine on you, crazy diamond. Uh, and the last one this week, everybody sent this to me. Everybody saw this. I am amazed no one was hurt. This is just stunning that no one was hurt. No one. I. But wow. <sighs> We've been doing a lot of stories about people crashing vehicles into buildings. This one, this lady wins. Just she cleaning lady steals train and yes. crashes into house. Good God. I thought I saw something that she was exonerated, though. I haven't, but. Officials remain baffled as to why a cleaning lady commandeered a train in the upscale Stockholm suburb uh, early Tuesday morning and crashed into a house. Saltsjöbaden. Saltsjöbaden. Wow. Saltsjöbaden. Okay. Uh, The woman started driving the train from the Neglinge. Neglinge? I think it's Neglinge train station. Just two stops from Saltsjöbaden. And usually a three minute ride. The train usually goes about 10 kilometers an hour, but we estimate that she was going 70 kilometers an hour. Wow. When the train reached the final stop in the line at 3 a.m., it careened off the track into the first floor kitchen of one of the house's three flats, causing severe damage. No passengers were on the train at the time, but a woman was trapped in the wreckage for two hours. Um, we still don't know what she was doing in the driver's seat and whether the incident was an accident. The cleaner, who was in her 20s, was flown by helicopter for uh, serious injuries. Uh, um, she's been ordered detained on suspicion of public devastation. It's incredibly lucky no one in the house was injured. What in the fuck? Yeah, I feel like I saw something about this that it was an accident, like she was cleaning it and hit a switch or something. Let me see if I can find it. No, I'm so no, if no, cleaning it and hit. A, yes, thank you. Uh, Psycho Babel, don't clean the red button. Oh, yes. Here. OK, someone who sent me the link here. Formula Fox. Let me have I will a send look it here. to you. Let's have a look at this. Swedish cleaner not to blame. Did not steal the vehicle. They said they now believe she started the vehicle by accident as she was cleaning it in the middle of the night. <laughs> okay. Number one, who the hell left this train in such a condition that pushing a switch would set it careening <laughs> down the fucking tracks? Yeah. I would just make sure when you're dusting the console, don't hit this one. I would think that a train, a fucking train that could go this damn fast would have a couple of buttons and maybe a key. Or like an emergency brake. Yes, a button that's or a big holy fuck stop button. That actually don't they have to be like. I mean, I've never driven a train, obviously. Don't they start with like a key? Don't you have to have some kind of clearance to start the train? Like, could we just hop into the train yard right now and steal ourselves a motherfucking train? That's terrifying. That because we're taking because if so, we're taking this show on the road because apparently we're going to be RDA Express. Damn it. All you need to do in Sweden 
is get in the train and push one button and find out which button it is. Zoom. And you've got yourself a train. I sense a safety flaw in this. I sense an opportunity. <laughs> That's you're sounding like me, Tara, and it's scary. It's scary. Come on, RDA Express cross country tour. It'll be so fun. <laughs> we could dress like hobos and have little bags on sticks over our shoulders. And we could just like stop at stops and you could just open the doors and yell fuck and then we'd roll on. It'd be great. We could learn to play the harmonica. I mean, the internet connection is probably not that great, but we could like just make videos and upload them at like Wi-Fi cafes or something. Uh, this is not a good, this is not a good plan. It'd be good times. I'm just, I'm picturing this cleaning lady in the train that's careening. Just, oh my God. Trying to yell I, out the windows. Uh, what? I would have lost my fucking mind. Yeah, just yelling out the window. Excuse me. Someone. <laughs> the train is going. Twister! <laughs> I just keep hitting little boys. <laughs> <laughs> and Chaotix nails it. You're going the wrong way. You're going to kill I someone. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, but at least she didn't do it on purpose. Ugh. I feel kind of better about that, that there's not some crazy cleaning lady trying to steal a train. I'm just I, what it concerns me oh, I, that I totally want to steal a train now. I might go down to the train station after this. It concerns me that you can set off a train with one button. I think that's the yeah, by like knocking a thing with your elbow. That's that's the first thing we learned tonight in Sweden. Stealing a train is easy. Yeah. One button. We you got yourself a monorail. I don't think you'll know how to steer it or make it slow down. I'm so disappointed in all of you. They're like, no, Tara, don't do it. Don't steal a train. Why do you hate fun? <laughs> Tara, you've gone a little crazy this week. Uh-uh. It is not I who am crazy. It is I who am mad. Okay. Um, so yeah, we've learned trains in Sweden. One button. Just one button. Yeah. So that's good to know. If you're ever in Sweden, one button. You know, who needs a ticket? One button. Also a train without a dead man switch. Yeah, what the fuck? Yeah, or an emergency brake or something. Anything, anything, anything. One fucking button. Um, we learned this week that uh, drinking can save you from worse jail time. Who knew? Sometimes drunk is the answer. But you'll never know until afterward. And that's the thorny part. Sometimes getting drunk will save you. Sometimes it will craft your doom. No that's, one knows. That's also a lot like getting laid, too. You know? Yeah. Sometimes drunk. Sometimes drunk. Amazing. All the this. best. All the best vices are like that, really. Yeah. Um, we learned that if you're going to jail for stealing. Just because they ask you to get something does not mean the solution is it's more stealing. Steal yeah. You should probably just bring your own. Two wrongs do not make a right. Two wrongs make jail term. Just. Uh. We've learned that the people at the Associated Press cannot write a headline to save their fucking lives. No, but we learn pastries and panties mm. are coming down the stairs. <laughs> and then I should have a job writing cartoon song lyrics. 
Someone right now. Panties are coming down in pairs. Someone right now is writing that song and drawing a picture on the internet of pastries in panties as we speak. Like an eclair and some little lacy French panties. Yeah, see, on it. There we go. Yeah, there they go. Yeah, see, yeah. Maybe like a jelly donut in some granny panties because they're kind of round. <sighs> and I could be the zany host like course, Steve on Blue's Clues. Of course, Cartoon Network would probably snap that shit up. I think I'm going to have to give you my two weeks notice on account of my suddenly really successful cartoon show idea. Pastries and panties. Yes. Yes. It'll be on Adult Swim. It'll be awesome. It'll be like cartoon softcore with creamy filling. Speaking of creamy filling, we've learned just because you're older and in the in, in the, uh, the 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 clergy does not mean life ends at sixty. No. You know, it's it's just There's, getting started. There's a lot of living left to do and a lot of meth left to make. God damn. Yeah. I did. Did you just I, at some point while being State a pre- classy Connecticut? Or like I always say, to quote Josh Lyman on the West Wing, not a lot to get excited about in a nutmeg state. Did did at some point he just say, you know, f- fuck it. What are they going to do? Fire me? At least he's not claiming that Jesus told him to do it. Yeah, that's that. Usually when you have some member of the clergy doing some crazy fucked up shit, they're like, I spoke to Jesus. At least he's like, yeah. Uh, I'm a I'm a bad man. And finally, we learned that. If part of your robbery involves sticking your head into something that smells like an alligator's asshole to accomplish your goal, go home and equip yourself properly. What if you're trying to rob an alligator's asshole? What if you know that that alligator swallowed like Captain Hook's buried treasure? I'm just saying. 